NFC East currently has two teams at 3-1 and one, and one undisputed, undefeated team. Then, of course, you got a team from Washington in last place. I think it's going to happen. I think Carson Wentz could be benched. And while he's getting benched, our boy Jordan Davis is starting to tear it up. in there so last year they said it was the nfc least this year i guess it's the nfc beast because we got two three and one teams and one undisputed undefeated 4-0 philadelphia eagles greatest franchise in the history of the world now we're going to get into it in a second, but before we do that, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like button. If you like the content, make sure you subscribe for daily Eagles content, NFL content. We will be streaming tomorrow night's game, Thursday night game, so look for that. Uh, and if you've been subscribed for a while, you know the deal. Just double check, double moonwalk check, make sure you're still subscribed. Five people in the last four days told me they got unsubscribed. So I don't know what's going on. Just double check. I appreciate it so much. Now... In this video, there's a lot that we got to talk about, okay? I kind of want to talk about where we stand with the NFC East and what's going on in it because it's really exciting. I mean, as much as I hate the Giants, as much as I hate the Dallas Cowboys, and I do, I hate them, uh, you got to admit, uh, it's fun when those games actually mean something. It's kind of fun when those teams are at least competitive and it's, you know, the, the division's kind of in doubt a little bit. There's something fun about it, especially doing it on, on you know, doing these on YouTube, these these uh, videos and streams. Uh, it's just, I, I kind of like it. That being said, I still root for Dallas to lose every stinking game that, that they can, lose everything. But I got to admit, on, on you know, the, the opposite side of that, it, it's it's fun. I mean, you look at that Sunday night game coming up uh, versus uh, Dallas uh, in two weeks, I mean, that, that you could be in a situation where you have a 5-0 and team versus a 4-1 and team. Two of the teams with the best records in the whole conference in the same division. And then if the Giants win, which they're not going to, but if they beat Green Bay, they're 4-1-2. and It's an exciting division. No question about it. Now, I don't know that I think these teams are even in the same league as the Philadelphia Eagles. Dallas wants respect. They're going to have to come get it because I, I, don't, I don't think they're that good. Uh, the Giants, I know they're not that good. I think the Giants have a young, a good young coach uh, in the ball. I, I like him. I, he was one of the guys I wanted the Eagles to hire a few years ago. Uh, he's doing a great job. Saquon Barkley looks really good. The Giants, they fight. They play hard. They, they, they get through adversity last week, even though it was Chicago. But they're playing hard, and the quality of football for them is much better. Now, they got... I think Green Bay coming up in Baltimore. I don't think they win either of those games. And then they got to go play the Jaguars, I believe. They could lose three of those games very easily. But I think the quality for, for the Giants um, the, in terms of football and play, I think if you're a Giant fan, you got to be happy with that. I, I definitely think you do. And then, you know, you have Dallas and the Eagles. They're, this is the battle of the NFC East because... Um, both these teams are winning. You got to give Dallas credit. And I hate the Cowboys, but I will give them credit. They're keeping their head above water, even though Dak Prescott is out. So much so that you have some sort of quarterback controversy. I don't know why. I don't see how Cooper Rush is better than Dak Prescott. But that's what some Cowboys fans think. Let them fight. Have at it. I ain't going to bother you. Go do what you got to do, okay? Um, but they're, they're our toughest competitor, to my surprise, you know? And then you got Washington. I mean, let's, can we just face it right now? Carson Wentz needs to be benched. He needs to be benched. He's done. He's cooked. He's fried. He's, he, he's been winced. He's been winced. The North Dakota assassin, he, he, his arm fell off. He just does not look good. He does not look good. He, he, I, I think his mechanics are all screwed up. Uh, you look at him in, in the, you know, one of his abilities when he was with the Eagles was that he could get out of, uh, bad situations. You get pressure, he could get out of the pocket. He was like, he had a great percentage, completion percentage from outside the pocket on the run. Um, but you look at him with Washington now, he can't move. 
He just can't move. I And a lot of Washington fans are actually calling. They're actually calling for him to get benched. So, I, I mean, I just think it's a matter of time before the guy's going to get benched, and he, and he deserves to. He, he definitely does. Washington is, is in a bit of trouble. They, they better figure something out, you know. Um, so it's going to be interesting. But I see him getting benched. I think the Giants lose the next two. And then you have the Cowboys. Like I said, Cowboys are playing the Rams. The Rams looked horrible. They looked horrible the other day. They looked horrible. So maybe Dallas can beat them. We'll see. I don't think it'll happen, but we'll see. And, and then, you know, Eagles got Arizona. Eagles are much better than Arizona, but they got to get it going on. So um, this division is is fun, and it's going to be an exciting few weeks. Uh, I cannot wait for the Cowboys. I cannot wait for it. It's going to be insane. Sunday night football, you know I'll be streaming it. You know it, you know. Um, another thing I want to kind of talk about real quick is Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis is who we thought he was, Batmans. He will, is who we thought he was. Holy Jordan Davis, Batmans. The kid can play. What you're seeing from Jordan Davis every week right now is he's getting better and better. And I think his conditioning is getting better and better, okay? Um, Bleeding Green Nation, shout out to them. They did, you know, they do a weekly grade on the rookie stuff. They gave Jordan Davis an A this week. This is what they said. Jordan Davis saw the third most snaps of defensive tackles against the Jacksonville and rewarded the Eagles with his best game yet. Davis' strong run defense contributed to a tremendous defensive effort that helped limit Trevor Lawrence, James Robinson, and Travis Etienne. I never say his name right. Davis looked better and better every week. So hopefully the Eagles keep his snap count where it is. And I know that you guys saw the one play where he just, I mean, he just bullied the center and just moved him out of the way. And he made the big tackle behind the line of scrimmage. This is the second week in a row where I've seen him get deep penetration. You know, shout out to Adrian Fedku. I wonder if he's doing some wrestle videos. The people's elbow. You know what I mean? I don't know. The bat elbow. But, you know. So, Jordan Davis has gotten better and better each week. And the one thing that I notice uh, is that he's not winded as much. Uh, like I said before, the first few weeks was like, you know, keep stay away from him. He needs to suck in all the oxygen in the world. Because he's like... <sighs> Now, he's like, boom, boom, and he's fine. So, his conditioning is getting better. He's getting used to it. He's yeah, definitely got to work on his pass rushing skills. But Jordan Davis is a beast, and he takes double teams, and he don't complain. We don't complain about Jordan Davis getting double teams. Like, like oh, Parsons getting double teams. We don't hear us complaining. Jordan Davis, go do your job. You're going to get double teamed. Do your job. Did LT complain about double teams? Did Jerome Brown complain about double teams? Did Derek Thomas? None of these guys complain. Just do your job. You know, but Jordan Davis, he's been absolutely fantastic. And we've also had a lot of talk about where's the Kobe Dean? Where's the Kobe Dean? The Kobe Dean hasn't seen the field in regular snaps since week one. Okay, so here's what they said about Bleeding Green Nation said about uh, Davis. He said, uh, I'm sorry, said about um, what's his face? Uh, the Kobe Dean. They said, since week one, since week one, the Kobe Dean has not seen the field except for special teams. Now, some people actually worry about this and are scared, you know, are, are like, oh, what does this mean about him? I don't think it means anything. I think N'Kobe Dean is a player. But right now, you have two guys, especially TJ Edwards, they're playing at Pro Bowl levels. So, why would he sniff the field? I, I, he wouldn't right now. Right now, uh, it's going to be hard for him to get any snaps because you got you got guys who are playing. You got good linebackers. This is the best receiving or uh, best linebacking core I've seen the Eagles have since Seth Joyner, Byron Evans, Jesse Small with William Thomas was the rookie. I don't know if you guys remember that Willie T, but um, this is a great linebacking core. Nicobe Dean, he's going to get his. I think I, I hope I didn't say call him Jordan Davis earlier. I'm, I, I'm just in love with Jordan Davis. What can I say? But N'Kobe Dean, um, he'll get his opportunities. He'll be fine. Not all guys have to develop and come around the same time. But I just think that when you look at N'Kobe Dean, there's just too much talent in front of him right now. And, and it is what it is. The Eagles, they better find a way to sign T.J. Edwards. 
you better find a way, you know? Uh, because he, you can't let that kid go. You brought him in as an well, undrafted free agent, and he slowly developed over the last few years. And not just being the best linebacker of the last year, but I think he's playing at a Pro Bowl level. TJ Edwards is a stud. He's a stud. Kaiser White, he's a stud. So the Eagles, I mean, it's, 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 you couldn't ask for more, you know? What I want to see today, and I'll have a video out later on in the day on this, but I'm really interested in that injury report. Uh, what's up with Isaac Samal? Where's Jordan Mulata at? What's up with Jake Elliott? You know, we need to know what, where we're at with these guys because uh, I think, I think, you know, I want Jordan Mulata to play. I want Sim I want these guys to play and be healthy. Uh, if Avante Maddox, if he, if his ankle can't go, I, I won't play him this week. I won't play him. If, 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 if Jordan Mulata can't get his, his arm up because it hurts his shoulder, I ain't playing him. I want these guys ready for week six. We can take this team without those guys. But week six, I mean, week six has to be the beating of a lifetime for now. It has to be the beating of a life. I don't care if it's 48 nothing play action bomb. I don't care if it's 72 nothing fourth quarter, 36 seconds left, Jalen Hurts comes out. Uh, dude, pull my Rand, pull the Randall Cunningham. Randall Cunningham, for you kids that don't know, maybe you're young, Randall Cunningham and the Eagles were playing the Cowboys. Now, this was like right after the strike ended. There was a strike. And so what happened was Cunningham, you know, the Eagles are winning, and they're going to kneel, kneel the ball, run the clock out. That's what everybody's thinking. But a few weeks before the strike ended when the Eagles played the Cowboys, the Cowboys had most of their players back. The Eagles didn't. And, and they, they, you know, Landry was like, well, we're not going to embarrass the, those guys, and we're, we're not looking to embarrass. We're going to win, you know, because everybody knew that with the – the, the strike going on and the players that were filling in for the NFL players that there was no way that the Eagles with a bunch of scab players were going to beat the Dallas Cowboys who were, you know, were, the, were, were a good team back then, a really good team. And, and Tom Landry ran the score up. He ran the score up. And so a few weeks later when the Eagles were playing back with their stars, uh, Buddy Ryan went to run it up on them. And what he did was he, he had Cunningham line up like he was going to kneel I'll put the link in the description if I can find a clip. And he fakes the knee and he throws a bomb to Mike Quick to rub it in. And then there's a pass interference call. The Eagles run in for a touchdown. They run up the score against Dallas. Buddy Ryan's running off the field like, like this. God, I love Buddy Ryan. I loved it. He ran it up on Tom Landry's face. It was beautiful. And it was warranted. And that's what I want. I don't care. 72 nothing. Fake the kneel down, throw the bomb. Let's, let's score 100, 150, 200, whatever it takes. I want this to be a beating of a lifetime for the Dallas Cowboys. But I'm see, I'm getting off track again. We got to focus on Arizona. Come on. Focus on Arizona. Focus on Arizona. Good thing I'm not a player because I'm having a real hard time. Arizona, we're coming for them meets. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. I definitely will. And of course, don't be a dingbat. Remember, it's Howie Vision. We're all just living in it. Man, Carson is really, really going downhill. I mean, he started the season, what, he was leading after like week two, he was leading the league in touchdown pass. He had seven, right? Yeah, I think he had seven touchdowns and like two interceptions, right? Uh, get this, after four weeks... Carson Wentz has only eight touchdowns, meaning he's only thrown one touchdown pass. He has five interceptions now. He has a quarterback rating of 35.7, and he's thrown for just over 1,000 yards. I mean, it's it not looking good for him. And, of course, you know, every press conference is, well, I'm not, it, it wasn't good enough. I'm not good enough today. Well, you know, I have to fit. It wasn't. It's the same thing all the time. I, I, it's a shame. You know, I, I, it's really a shame. I, I like Carson. I, I wish him well. I, I hope he goes to another team that's not in a division. Um, but, man, he don't look good right now. And, listen, Washington doesn't help him at all. There's no question about it. They're not helping him at all with that offensive line. But, man, I, 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 think, uh, I think this could be his last hurrah. And I, I think he's he going to get benched in another couple weeks if, if, he doesn't, uh, if he doesn't fix things. Just my thoughts. Denzel Washington out.